Be loved in the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
unfailing providence orders all things both in heaven and earth, we humbly implore you to put away from us all hurtful things and to give us those things that are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament reading for this seventh Sunday of Trinity is written in Genesis chapter 2, the prophet Moses says, Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is the Pishon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Havilah where there's gold, and the gold of that land is good. Bedelium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is the Gihon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is the Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, you may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. The epistle is written in Romans chapter 6, the Apostle Paul says, I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Given thanks, he broke them 
and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd. And they had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And there are about 4,000 people. And he sent them away. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds. 
grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text from the scripture is from Mark chapter 8, your brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. If you had a three days off for vacation, would you go to the desert? That's what 4,000 with their limited time off decide to do, traveling further into the boonies, as we like to call it here in the Midwest, yeah? But at least out here in some sticks and meadows, you've got some deer and rabbits, maybe a squirrel if you get hungry. Out there in the desert, there ain't much good to eat. Every real estate, common sense human being knows you don't go out in the desert willingly. Location, location, location. Real estate brokers know value for the housing market doesn't go up when you leave civilization. Crop yields don't go up when you add and pour on sand. Good hunting grounds not found out there unless you want yourself some Kentucky Fried Rattlesnake. That's not first on my menu. So despite all that, here's 4,000 plus, maybe counting women and children, over 10,000, volunteering for no paid leave to follow Jesus out into nothing. Now, what, what man would follow Psalm 47 and clap their hands and shout to God as they march out into muck. But yet they go. Location, location, location. Following Jesus, who is the location for divine worship and a life of faith. Now first, this crowd is obviously not going out there following Jesus for the money. Even if he has performed miracles and they have followed him, heard his teaching, we must have this clear, Christians. Christianity is not about cashing in on earth. Jesus is not a pyramid scheme prosperity preacher. We are not a get-quick-rich church. Their worship, rather, is not for the money, but for the Lord. They remember the Sabbath day by seeing the Lord of the Sabbath and hearing his word. They do not despise his sermons, however long they might be, for his preaching is true, even if they follow him out into the desert. Christian, as a believer in Jesus, who confesses Jesus as your Savior, you must have this in mind, that you will remain faithful to the true Lord, the one God, no matter where that might lead you on earth. Job stayed true to the Lord, and yet he lost thousands of his livestock, all ten of his children, and had his wife curse him and tell him to curse God and die. The Hebrews, who were the Lord's people on earth, lived in the wilderness for 40 years with barely a crumb or a drop of water that they could see. Jesus called the 12 apostles, remember? Telling them to drop their nets and their boat and follow him. That led to their martyrdom. They got poorer in spirit. Christian, we have all these examples to remind us we ain't in this for the money. Jesus leads the 4,000 into the desert. And then I have a little bit of a beef with the Lord. Because after three days of this, it's only then when he says to his apostles, I have compassion on the crowd. They've been with me three days. If I send them home, they will faint on the way. Some of them have come from far 
away. This one I'm ready to ask. Uh, location, Jesus. <laughs> Why did you walk us all the way out here into the boonies with nothing to eat? So the disciples ask. How can one person feed these people, thousands, with bread in the desert? That's exactly Jesus' point. He was begging the question because he is the one who feeds people bread in the desert. Where Jesus is, their divine worship is. So he asked the disciples, well, how many, how many loaves have you been holding back? Seven, they say. I don't know, there's 12 of them. So they're figuring maybe a half a loaf each. But Jesus takes that, and he asks the crowd to sit down. Sitting down in the desert for a meal. Whatever happened to Elam? That was the first stop for the wandering Hebrews after they exited the Red Sea. It was an oasis, 12 springs, 70 palm springs, 70 palm trees. And here, the 4,000 have none of that. They've got seven loaves. They have followed their Lord, hearing him teach, seeing him heal, seeing him speak in authority. But now, out in the desert, you might think Jesus is lost. When he says, I've got compassion on the crowd, let's feed them, you might think, well, maybe you should have thought of that before we got out here. But Jesus is never lost. He knows exactly where he's at. He knows exactly what to do. Jesus is batting a thousand against deserts, if you've been keeping track. There was the 40 years where he let his people out, the 40 days where he himself without, with, without food, facing all the devil's temptations, and the promise in Isaiah to make the deserts a babbling brook of life, a new Eden, if you will. He is the one who feeds people bread in the desert with the manna that came every day for 40 years without stopping. These 4,000 have rightly followed their Lord wherever he leads. It has not helped their stock in the market, but it has helped them to be rich toward God. He takes the seven loaves, he blesses them, and they take up seven body-sized baskets of leftovers and fish to boot. Toto, I have a feeling we are not in Kansas anymore. You're right. Because the 4,000 and you have come into the presence of the divine, the true God, where Jesus serves us. That's what we're doing in church. That's why you're here on Sunday morning. Not to serve God primarily, but for God to serve you. We call it the divine service because that is what worship is. God serving us. You Lutherans define worship as the desire to receive forgiveness of sins, grace, and righteousness. These people were hungry and they needed food. They desired Jesus and they were fed. You You've got refrigerators, pantries, and cupboards, probably full like mine. You're not here to have something fill up your stomach. You are here to worship and to receive forgiveness, grace, and righteousness. Knowing those things, knowing you're here, needing forgiveness from your sins, makes you a better worship leader than most. If you desire forgiveness from Christ, you know more about worship than many other confessions. That is what worship is. Desiring for Christ to forgive you. It is why you, 
make the expectation and the promise yourself that you should be in church every Sunday. Because you need God's forgiveness every week and every day. And Jesus, he has compassion on you. He, crucified and risen, body and blood given, sacrament driven, has compassion on you. If he knows the 4,000 are hungry, if he fed the many in the wilderness for 40 years, he certainly knows what you need. So he gives you what you need here. His word, his life, his forgiveness. Here, though it might not seem like it, just like a desert might not look like it, is your vacation. It's your respite. Because Jesus is the place of divine worship. It doesn't matter how sick or old or tired or sinful or hungry you are. He is the Lord of life. And he has life to give. And you have life to receive. Now, Jesus is the place for divine worship, but then he sends the crowds away. After all that, three days with the Lord, and finally an awesome meal to end it, Jesus sends them away. And they go home. Right after this, the Pharisees start begging Jesus for a sign. Let us see if you really are the Messiah. And so they ask for a miracle. Jesus doesn't give it to them. They kind of missed it in the desert and otherwise. And then the disciples hop into Jesus in a boat. They're pretty avid sailors being fishermen. And they get hungry again. <laughs> And they start arguing, how are they going to eat? Now, this time, they've only got one loaf and 12, 13 people to feed. Jesus asks them, do you not remember the 5,000 and we took up 12 baskets? Do you not remember the 4,000 we just fed and we took up seven baskets? Do you understand these things? Right after this amazing miracle, here the Pharisees are doubting, and here the disciples are forgetting. Does that sound familiar? I mean, that, that sounds like me, you know? I come to church, I receive, I get filled up with eternal blessings. Christ really has one eternal life for you. And then, without fail, later in the day, sometimes sooner, sometimes later, I just forget that Christ will provide and take care of me. We praise him, we're forgiven, we're fed by his body and blood, and Jesus sends us back into the world. And I get stuck on looking at the one piece of bread thinking, I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't know if I can make it. Christians, Jesus does send us back into the desert. This world, that's dog-eat world. This world of desolation with little gospel to give you. This world of sin. Ours? and our neighbors. He sends you back into your homes, into society. But he does not send you to be alone, to forget him, or even to be without him. We get stuck on our one piece of bread, forgetting the giver of all things, and we start worrying, or we sin, or we get mad or impatient, are frustrated when we shouldn't. No matter how many weeks we've come to church, like the disciples, we can forget that Christ is with us. He fed the crowd, not so that they would forget or, oh, only need a one-time Jesus and they're good. No. Jesus comes with them 
to the world, where it's not just vacation, but it is vocation. That is, where Jesus calls you to serve your neighbor, to work, to labor, to serve, to care, to love, to do. Jesus sends you to do, but to do with him. He's not just your God on Sunday morning alone. He is your God every day. Think about it. Jesus is with you far more every day than Buddha ever has been for a Buddhist or Allah for a Muslim. Those gods aren't even real and people commit their lives to them. You have the one Lord who is the true God. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. So he sends you back in the world, to society, to your family, to the neighbors you like, and the neighbors you don't like, even into the desert. But just because we leave church doesn't mean we leave Christ. He goes with you. I think bread is a beautiful metaphor of this. Bread was not the food Adam and Eve had to eat in Eden. Remember? There's all the plants. There's fruits and vegetables. Yeah? They don't have bread. Bread doesn't come till after the wages of sin is death, after Adam and Eve sin. Then by the sweat of your brow, Adam, you shall eat bread. Bread takes work. You know it. Tilling, plowing, sowing, cultivating, harvest, threshing, milling, mixing, baking, all to get a piece of bread. And probably a lot more than that, too. It's way more involved than eating a grape off the vine and eating. And so when Jesus feeds the 4,000, he's done all that work for miracle bread right there instantly for them. All Christ's work. When Jesus sends you into the world, he sends you back to the plow and back to baking, back to laundry and chores, back to school. Oh, say it isn't so. Yes. <laughs> In about a month. Back to sweating. God? Still provides the sun and the rain, thanks be to God. He still provides the growth, but he uses you for the labor. It is God with you. He uses you and your sweat, your muscle, your back to serve others. It is incarnate, your love and your labor. And when you work, you are not to forget Jesus is with you. Even if you're the only one pulling the weight at work, it seems like, or in your family for the chores, even if you're the only one up in the morning or at night, you are never alone. God is working with you, always watching, always providing, always caring, always motivating you to keep it up. This is your life of faith. To know and trust God is always with you. Now back to worship, and then we can say amen. <laughs> we are going to consider uh, passing the plate again. We haven't done that for a while, right? And we did that for certain reasons for the past year. We're, we're going to discuss maybe uh, passing it through the pews again. And... I think that this is law and gospel all wrapped up into one, because uh, when you put money into the plate, that is God and you, right? It is your work, but all your work is done with God. Everything is the Lord, the world and the fullness thereof. Whatever you give is actually God's that's given you work through you, but it really is also your work, a tithe, a portion given back to God. To praise him at this altar and give glory to his name. The offerings is God in us. But that place.
spotlight gets up here and on the altar, this is all God's work. This is all gospel. He takes that bread and miracles it into his body and blood. One done completely by him on the cross and from the grave. Eternal life, manna from heaven, given and shed for the forgiveness of your sins. And the gift of eternal life that no one else could give but Christ alone. It is law and gospel all in one. And it's done in faith. It's divine worship and its vocation, how you are called to serve neighbor and God. And it's good. It's very ceremonial even, as Jesus got uber liturgical all of a sudden when it came to giving the bread and the fish in the desert. You, Christian, are called never to forget that. You've got a job out there. Christ has eternal gifts to give here. You are never alone. He fed the 4,000 plus, and he returned them to a life of faith, knowing he is with you wherever you go. He is the location of your divine worship. He is the location of your faith. And he is the location of eternal life that he gives for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand and sing. according to their needs. Lord God, our King over the earth, reigning over all nations, sitting on your throne, receive our prayer and praise. Subdue the devil and the world of our sinful flesh that we would share in the victory that your Son, Christ, has won for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord of the earth, our Savior, multiply bread and fish, feeding 4,000 in Gentile territory, thereby showing your kingdom open to all nations. Bless the work of the gospel and missionaries in our country and around the world, that all people would receive your gospel through word and sacrament unto faith and eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy, Creator and preserver of all things, govern and sustain your earth for our good. Provide for our need of body and soul. Bless the labor of those who produce food and shelter, safety and peace 
especially for the poor. Lead us to recognize your gracious hand in all things and give thanksgiving for our daily bread. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, giver of life, you formed us from the dust of the earth and breathed the breath of life. All people made in your image have dignity and worth in your sight. Defend the gift of earthly life from every age and bless all mothers with child, including Connie, Jessica, and Lily. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord and giver of life, you bless our homes to be a holy chapel where your word leads and guides us every day in faith. We pray in thanksgiving for all Christian marriages, especially Pastor and Amy, for the health of all families and for the blessed gift of love that is shared and given. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, graciously regard all for whom we pray, including Carl Becker, Callie Binning, Tina Binning, Sherry Dainby, Tiffany Dunaway, Bernice Grommans, Zoe Haler, Tim Mueller, Luella Rubin, Susie Rush, Irene Spilker, Karen Stimke, Steve Velker, Cleet Wessendorf, Jean Wharton, Craig Wolf, Lily Wright, for Marcella Wolf upon her upcoming surgery, and Frat Francis Dedman injured in a car wreck but recovering. Lord, in your mercy, God of grace, your son fed thousands in the wilderness, multiplying bread and fish. We pray you feed us today, gathered in your name, receiving your body and blood in true faith, that even in the wilderness of this world, we share in the gift of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, all things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, dear Father, for the sake of him who has died and risen and reigns forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Jesus Christ. 
Ghost on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you for his sake. You give us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we would be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. from me, and then I'll have um, Lance Wills come up and talk about um, stewardship again to keep us engaged and on pace with things that are going on with um, the blessings we have in our church. Um, first, there's a handout as you leave to the left. This is a proposal for a, re a revision to our parish hall rules. Uh, we'd like to put this before the voters next Sunday. So this will give you a, a week to look it over and ask any questions if you have them. And also, with this being our 160th anniversary, a question came up as far as whether we would participate in the county fair parade as we had a Memorial Day parade with our float in the fair parade. That will be August 1st. And to help maybe the council or voters see the desire of the general will of the body, so that will be in the afternoon of August 1st. That's a Sunday. About what time again? Uh, if, if we want to be part of the judging process mm -hmm. and organization, uh, they suggest that we be at the Alma High School parking lot by 245. Uh, if not, if we just simply want to walk in the parade, uh, the parade will step off at 415 on Sunday, August 1st from the high school. Okay, for judging 245, about 415, if not for judging. Can I just see a show of hands of some of, if you are willing to participate August 1st in the parade, if we were to be a part of the parade? Show of hands. I'm getting about 15, maybe 20. So that'll help if we, if we have, if, if there's enough desire. Thank you. Um, Lance, would you please come forward as Vice President of our congregation to give us an update on Stewardship and the Budget Committee.
we stand for the recessional. 